Welcome back to Skyrim. Thank you so much for joining me again. We're just outside, I think, of Iverstead. And at the end of the last episode, I said that uh, I wanted to rest until morning so that we enter the little town uh, at the break of dawn. So uh, that's what uh, you're going to do. We're going to rest for a little bit. Eh, we'll just, you know, get seven hours of sleep here. And... Um, let the sun come up, let the people in the town wake up, and then uh, we'll go on into Iverstead. The reason we're coming here is because, um, well, the Greybeards have called us here. When we slayed that dragon a while back, uh, they saw it happen. And then we heard this crazy sound, and um, we were told by the Jarl of Balgriff that uh, we need to come here because um, the, uh, the Greybeards are interested in us. So that's what we're doing. This is a quest called uh, the way of the voice that is what we are doing and from here it looks like a teeny tiny little place but I like that it sits on the water here that's real nice um okay I thought I saw some more of those gourds I picked up some gourds over here just a moment ago when I was talking and uh I hadn't seen gourds before so I was kind of curious about them. I don't know if they're a food or an ingredient. Uh, looks like they're just food, huh? Yeah, they're just food. Okay, so then in that case, I don't care about them. Well, let's greet this guy. See if he's friendly. Hey, dude, what's up, man? Oh, you're not even a dude. Heard they're reforming the Dawn Guard. Vampire hunters or something in the old fort near Riften. Might consider joining up myself. Okay, you do that. I'll see you there. Iverstead has been discovered. It's all very exciting. So, I mean, as far as I know, the only quest that we have here is this um, Greybeard one, right? So if I take the time and go through the trouble of selecting every single quest, well then, by golly, I could look at the map and it'll tell me if I have any other quests here in Iverstead or in the nearby area. This is a bit of a tedious task, but uh, I think it's worth it. Okay, show me the map game. Map. And here, huh, interesting. It doesn't even show this task being here. Hmm. Um. I mean... I mean, I'm pretty sure I was supposed to go to Iverstead. I mean, why else am I here? The way of the voice. What in the world? How did... Oh my gosh. Why am I here? <laughs> why have I gone to Iverstead? This doesn't say anything about Iverstead. The Greybeards have summoned me to their monastery of High Hrothgar, on the slopes of the throat of the world. They seem to have learned of the mysterious power that I gained when I killed the dragon outside Whiterun. Speak to the Greybeards. It doesn't say anything about Iverstead. Um... Yeah, jeez. Um... Uh... Why am I not showing any quest over here? Current location, Iverstead. If I look at the local map... Oh my gosh. What in the world is going on? Um... Oh man. Let me turn everything off except that. Oh my gosh, I hate to think that I've made this walk here for no reason. The way of the voice. It's up here. What in the world? Huh, um... I... I guess I'll go back and look at my previous episodes, but... I can't imagine why in the world I would have come to... Iverstead if the game wasn't pointing me here. Is it possible that the game has pointed me here first and now that I'm here it's telling me that I'm going here actually? 
I hope that's the case, because otherwise I feel like a total dolt. But I, I don't see how I could have been led to Iverstead any other way. I really don't. Um, Villamir in here. Well, I mean... Wow. Basically, we need to go up there somehow. Um, well, go in here and ask around. Maybe think we need their laws. maybe they they know about the Greybeards and how to get to them. Maybe well, we could go in here and ask. If there's anything I can get you, just let me know. Is it absolutely necessary for you to bother me right now? Bassianus Axius? Yes, it is necessary. You don't look like a pilgrim. Why bother visiting Iverstead? Well, is there anything you can tell me about High Hrothgar? Wait a minute, hold on. <sighs> what a boring conversation. I think you played beautifully. It would be a shame if you stopped. All right, Wilhelm. I suppose it's the least I can do for you. Okay, I don't like to miss out on conversations going on in the background. I find it distracting. Uh, but I heard that conversation there, and I wanted to run over Pardon and me, eavesdrop on it. Oh. Would you care to hear me play my lute? Yeah, I would. Play your lute. Let's if hear you it. fancy a bit of music, let me know. What do you play? I play the lute. If you'd like to hear something, it only costs five gold. Only five gold? Merely five gold? I'd easily pay twice that to hear you play. Yeah, let's persuade her. That's so sweet of you. I'm very sweet. I'll tell you what. I play a special song just for you, oh. for no charge at all. Oh, thanks. Okay. Let's hear it. Okay. All right, get on with it. Okay. All right. Okay, well, <laughs> oh, here we go. Magic loot. Well, that was beautiful. Thank you, Lindley Starsung. I enjoyed that. Thank you for playing that song for me at no cost. Now. Pardon oh. me, my lord. Would you care to hear me play my lute? Uh, I just did. Uh, anything you can tell me about High Hrothgar? I've always fancied a journey up the 7,000 steps to the monastery. Anything to break the boredom of living in this town. I envy you. Why don't you, uh... Come with me. What's on the menu? Depends. Are you thirsty? Hungry? Both? Mm, um, none of those things, actually. But uh, is there anything that you would consider buying from me? Say, um, sleeping tree sap? This is these. Are these the only potions I'm carrying? Maybe these are the only potions she'll buy from me. She'll buy skooma from us. Huh, interesting. Now, I don't know if I could get addicted to skooma or what. I don't know, man. I'm gonna sell her these gourds. They have no value at all. <laughs> I could sell her this mead. There, take that. All right, that's all. She's that's all. That's it. Thanks. A pleasant journey, my lord. Let's go bother this guy. Is it absolutely necessary? It is actually. Me right now. If you fancy a bit of music, let me know. Okay. You don't look like a pilgrim. Why bother visiting Iverstead? Well, is there anything you tell me about High Hrothgar? Clinic brings food supplies up to them once every few weeks, when the weather permits it. Other than that, they seem like a quiet lot. Don't really know too much about them. Okay. Nice talking to you, I guess. <sighs> what a boring conversation. You were the one who did all the talking. Yeah? We don't get many visitors through here. Unless they're headed up to High Hrothgar, of course. Well, guess what? That's where I'm going. If I were you, I'd keep away from the barrow on the east Ooh. side of town. It's haunted. Well, for some reason, we could almost always ask innkeepers about magic, so let's ask him about it. He's probably going to tell us the same thing every other innkeeper has told us. Sir, I've got no interest in magic users. 
No use for their kind at all. They're way up north in Winterhold, and that's fine with me. Okay. I don't even like our Jarl having a court wizard. Your Jarl has a court wizard? Cool. Uh, tell me more about this barrow. There ain't much more to tell. They're haunted, and you should stay away. <laughs> Look, I've seen one of the spirits with my very own eyes. When it glared at me, I swear it burned right through my soul. Hmm. Okay. So do the spirits haunt your town as well? Fortunately, they seem to be sticking to the barrow. I think they're guarding it. Certainly isn't helping my business any. Who'd want to rent a room anywhere near a haunted barrow? I, I could investigate that for you. If you think there's anything you can do, be my guest. Cool. Now we're supposed to investigate Shroud Hearth Barrow. Get right on that. Hey man, has anybody ever explored the barrow? About a year or two ago, some fella named Windelius came through. Said he was some kind of a treasure hunter. I warned him not to go in there, just like I warned you. The very next night we heard screams from the barrow, and that was it. We never saw Ooh. him again. That was a good scary story. Hey man, I'm looking for work. You got any leads? Here, take a look at this. Some hmm. of the Jarl's men came by and left this bounty letter. Okay, cool. Kill the dragon located at Lost Tongue Overlook. Let's look at that now before you I forget. Through again. Stop by for a drink. Okay. So we got a new bounty letter here. And it's probably this one that we haven't read yet, so let's take a look at it. Bounty by order of Layla Lawgiver. To all able-bodied and fearless men and women of the Rift. The dragon, located in Lost Tongue Overlook, has been carrying off livestock and terrorizing citizens and visitors. A handsome reward will be offered to anyone who kills it. Anurel. Cool. Alright. Awesome. We can do that. I'll get right on it. Okay, maybe not right on it, but, you know, eventually. We don't get many visitors through here. Unless they're headed up to High Hrothgar, of course. I think I saw it again. That ghost. It was over by the barrows. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was curious. I didn't believe the stories. I won't go over there ever if again. If you pass through again, see that you don't. Uh. I promise to keep you safe. And I'm not going to break my word. He's talking to her. I hope you heard her say that... I saw the ghost again. I'm sorry. I went over by the barrows. She's like, I won't do it again. And he's like, better not. Pardon me, my lord. Would you care to hear me play my lute? Yes. If you fancy a bit of music, let me know. Let's hear it. I'd like to hear another song. Right away, my lord. Okay, cool. Let me know if I can get you anything. Okay, nice little background music while we talk to him. Hi. Mm -hmm. So, uh, what can you tell me about Hrothgar, dude? The Greybeards are a solitary lot. I don't think they've ever ventured outside their monastery. We get the occasional pilgrim passing through here on their way to the summit, but almost all of them have returned disappointed. Hmm. Okay. Well, um... Wasted time, but what do you got for sale? Take a look. Nothing I am interested in. Good day, sir. Good day. Keep your eyes open in the barrow. That's how they get you. That's how they get me? By keeping my eyes open? Wait, I'm confused. Let's look around this place, just see if there's anybody else hanging out. I got a couple books in here. We'll have a jack. Fall from glory. Got another room here. Not a bad little place, really. Pretty nice. Not a whole lot of customers, though. Just one customer. Is it absolutely necessary for you to bother me right now? And a uh, room here with some gold. People just leave their gold sitting out. Very trusting. Ooh.
Oh, what's the clap button? That was good. I wonder where um our good buddy uh, Wilhelm lives. Does he live in I here? I think you should continue with your performances. Yeah, I think you should too. What's the point? Oh. I'm not very good, and it's only for the same few people every night. Yeah. I think you play beautifully. Yeah. It would be a shame if you stopped. I agree, Wilhelm. All right, Wilhelm. I suppose it's the least I can do for you. you it's the least like you pilgrim. could do. Why bother visiting either? Okay, state? well, I don't know if we learned anything, except we were remi we were reminded of the 7,000 steps it's going to take to get up to High Hrothgar. Let's see what this place is. Kil Klimek's house, okay. It's locked. Neat. There were some boards over there. They got a lumber yard here. This is a teeny tiny little town, man. Teeny teeny tiny. Is that fur coming out of your ears? Yes, it is. It's fur, okay? I know your sights are set beyond this town, but for now, while you're under our roof, I need you to pitch in a little more. Yes, mother. Hmm. Yeah, pitch in a little more, will ya? Hi, how's it going, Boti? You must be another pilgrim on the way up to High Hrothgar. I am. No other reason to pass through here. It's true. Anything you can tell me about High Hrothgar? It's frightening living below their monastery. Sometimes I swear I can hear strange noises rolling down from up there. It sounds like thunder, but there's never any rain. What do you make of that? I don't know. Sure, leave. Everyone else does. Jeez. Oh, you're a traveler. You must have so much to tell about the world outside this boring town. I do. You got some free time? Have anything interesting to tell me? No. I only have a question to ask you. Anything you can tell me about High Hrothgar? The Greybeards are a strange bunch. I heard they live their entire life without uttering a single word. What? Can you even imagine? No, I can't. I wish I could go with you. <sighs> Well, come on. Destruction magic's fine. Just don't go burning down any buildings. Okay, thanks. I thought there was another dude over here. I don't know where he went. Maybe it's lunchtime. Oh, there he goes. I can't imagine how exciting it must be to journey from daughter's driving. Oh, <laughs> Pilgrim or not, if I were you, I'd move right through our backwards little town. Damn, let's go into Fellstar Farm, Can just I because. Help? Yeah, man, talk to me. Tell me a story. What's going on in here? What a cute place. Not a whole lot of privacy, though, jeez. Just a little one-room building. Got some books in here. You have to let Fastrid follow her heart. You can't tell her what to do. Hmm. She's our only child, Boti. Am I to throw her to the wolves? You're hardly throwing her to the wolves. She just wants to see the world, just like I did when I was her age. And if she decides to leave Iverstead, what then? No. No, I can't bear the thought. Hmm. Can't bear it, man. Better not be here to stir up any trouble. I'm not. If you ever settle down to have children, think twice before you do it. Okay. Anything you tell me about High Hrothgar? They call it the path to the monastery to 7,000 steps. Can you imagine? I'm not certain if I could even make it to the top without collapsing from exhaustion. It does sound like a lot of steps. Just get out of town as fast as you can. Nothing for anyone here. Well then why are you here? Okay, so we got a little lumber mill over here. It's like an old abandoned building over there. And, um, I thought I saw another building somewhere. I'm not sure how to get to it. Nope, this is, um, that one house that was locked. That's all. Okay. Then we've got Shroud Hearth Barrow. Oh, this is the barrow. Ooh, neat. Is that one of the old ruins? Is that one of the old ruins? Ooh. Huh. Interesting. 
Well, I mean, I'm going to guess that there's no house to buy in this town. But uh, apparently there's a Jarl around here somewhere. Um, I don't know what... Uh, well, I don't know what the proper term is. This is a city. Like, Whiterun is a city, but Whiterun is also the name of the... It's not a state. But you know what I'm saying. Um... I mean, this place is teeny tiny. Huh. Anyway, the reason I'm saying this is because I hate the thought of going into the barrow and uh, getting all filled up with adventure and stuff and then not having any place to put it. Um, so maybe we will stop by here on our way back from the 7,000 steps. Enchant my sword. Donald Blade can barely cut butter. Can barely cut the bottle. All right, let's do this, man. On your way up the seven thousand steps again, Clement? Not today. I'm just not ready to make the climb to High Hrothgar. The path isn't safe. Aren't the Greybeards expecting some supplies? Honestly, I'm not certain. I've yet to be allowed into the monastery. Perhaps one day. What's up? I wish I could make my deliveries more often, but the road's getting dangerous. Is it? Passing through on your way to High Hrothgar? About to make a delivery up there myself. Alright, one at a time, boys. One at a time. Uh, anything you could tell me about High Hrothgar? I've been to the monastery many times, but I've never even laid eyes on one of the Greybeards. Not that I'd care to. Being masters of the Thum, they could kill you by uttering a single word. Yep. Well, not that they would. They seem peaceful, but I wouldn't want to provoke them. Alright. What types of deliveries do you make? Mostly food supplies like dried fish and salted meats. You know, things that keep fresh for a long time. The Greybeards tend not to get out much, if you catch my meaning. And in return? Well, it's kind of an understanding between us. I mean, it just wouldn't feel right to charge them for a bit of preserved food. Trouble is, my legs aren't what they used to be, and climbing the 7,000 steps takes its toll. Hmm. I, I, could, I could do it for you. Really? Well, that would be kind of you. Here, take this bag of supplies. At the top of the steps, you'll see the offering chest. Just leave the bag inside, and you're done. Okay. Cool. That sounds like fun. Uh, anything I should watch out for during the climb? Well, there's the occasional wolf pack or stray, but that's all I've ever had to deal with. Shouldn't be a problem for the likes of you. Other than that, watch your footing. In these wintry conditions, the stairs can be treacherous. Cool, man. Sounds like fun. Looks like he has something else. Nope, that's it. Nothing else to tell. Be careful up there. All right. Where'd the other guy go? I wanted to talk to him. The elf dude. Where'd he go? I haven't talked to him yet. I don't know where he went. Because, I mean, I didn't see another house here for him to be living in. So where did he go? Is this a guard? Yeah, that's a guard over there. Huh, I don't know where this guy went. Unless he went into the tavern. The inn, that is. Welcome to the Villamere Inn. If there's anything I can get you, just let me know. Um, well, I mean... Here for work? Get an axe and bring me all the wood you can chop. Where were you earlier? This has to be the worst place in Skyrim to run a mill. How am I supposed to do anything with all those bears running around? Uh, you having a bear problem, are you? Are you kidding? Those damn things will drive me right out of business. I'm not very good. Tell you what, bring me ten of their pelts Ooh. from anywhere in Skyrim. Mm. I'll gladly pay you for thinning out the herd. Ten pelts, huh? I have a few pelts already. Um, how could bears run you out of business? Have you ever seen what a bear does to the trees? They jump on their hind legs and scratch them to bits, marking their territory or something. It's getting to the point where I have to scour Skyrim for untouched trees at the right size. Cost me too much time and money. Okay. 
Um, is that what's making you so angry? There's that elf dude. If I could sweep her away from here tomorrow. My business is falling apart. My apprentice never listens to me. And now there's talk of dragons. If I hadn't sunk every bit of gold I had into my mill, I would have picked up and left Iverstead long ago. Okay. Well, what can you tell me about High Hrothgar? The Greybeards stay away from me, and I stay away from them. Suits me just fine. Okay, nice talking to you. Now go give those stupid bears what's coming to them. Oh, jeez. She wants bear pelts. Um, I believe I've already got a few bear pelts. I thought I did. I don't know what um, tab they'd be under. I just have bear claws. I don't know. Okay, cave bear pelts. Is that okay? Cave bear pelts? Is that all right? Let's talk to this mysterious guy. Those bears are making Miss Temba so angry. I hope you can do something about them. Oh, I can. Hello, my friend. What can I do for you on such a fine day? You seem quite happy. My father taught me an important lesson many years ago. He said, Gwilin, you have the whole world before you. Go out and experience it. Be whatever you want to be. So I took his advice, and here I am. This life might not look like much to you, but I'm content. And isn't that all that matters? Hey, man, brother. Hey, uh, anything you could tell me about High Hrothgar? I always thought it was odd that there's a layer of thick clouds covering the peak of the mountain above the monastery. Huh. Not sure what's up there. But I bet the Greybeards know. Hmm. Okay, nice talking to you, dude. Have yourself a great day. Thanks. Have yourself a great day. Alright, come on, Lydia. Let's go. Well, um, we now have new miscellaneous quest here. Bring the supplies to High Hrothgar. Fun? No trouble. Not at all. Who's this over here? Let's go talk to this person. Ooh, Nernroot. Hey man, how's it going? Oh, Raider, Raider. You live among the clouds now, dear Raider. What's going on, Narfi? I can't see you, Raider. I can't find you. Why are you hiding? Hiding? Hide, hide, hide. Don't make me sad. Um, are you okay, Narfi? Raider was here, then gone. Went to gather plants and never came home. Nope, nope. Everyone hmm. looked and no one could find her. Wilhelm said she'll be back. Told Narfi not to worry. Raider will come back. Hmm. Okay. What's wrong with you, man? With father, I said goodbye. With mother, I said goodbye. Raider leaves and Narfi can't say goodbye. Mm. Makes Narfi very, very sad. Narfi needs Raider to say goodbye. Mm, that's sad. All right, goodbye. If you see Raider, tell her that Narfi misses her and to come home soon. Very soon. Soon. Soon like the moon. The moon is very soon. Well, I mean, we're right here. Um... Let's go ahead, and uh, we could ask uh, Wilhelm about Rada. We could do that. Why not? Like I said, we're right here. Whoa. <laughs> oh, okay. It's just a beast. Welcome to the Villamir Inn. If there's anything I can get you... Just let me know. Oh, it's Clemic. I wish I could make my deliveries more often, but the road's getting dangerous. Mm -hmm. Need a room? Maybe a drink? You name it. So, hey man, what's the story with Narfi? Ah, uh, he's harmless. He's been in a state ever since his sister Raida disappeared over a year ago. Mm. He just keeps to himself in what's left of his folks' farmhouse across the river. You told Narfi she's coming back? I just said that to make the poor guy feel better. I'm pretty sure she's dead. Raider would gather ingredients from the small island in the river east of here. Then one day, she just vanished. Hmm. I tried to look for her, but she never turned up. Hmm. Oh no. Well, let's see here. Maybe we could uh, find her remains. Is there anything dangerous on that small island to the east? I've seen some sort of a cave entrance over there. Folks call it Geierman's Hall. But I don't know why. 
Probably best if you avoid it for now. It didn't seem to do Raida any good. Hmm. Okay. All right. Thanks. If you're headed up to the monastery, watch your step. It's a long way down. What's a big barrel right there? All right. So now we've got this. Uh, locate Raida's remains. I, think I saw it again. That's ghost. It was over by the barrows. That thing's evil, Linley. I told you to keep away from there. I'm sorry. I was curious. I didn't believe the stories. I won't go over there ever again. Yeah, don't go over See there. See that you don't. Ever again. I promised to keep you safe, and I'm not going to break my word. I wonder who we promised to keep Is her it safe. Absolutely necessary for you to bother me. Nope. Right now? Not necessary at all. I just like to do it because I wish it's I fun. Could make my deliveries more. Yeah, often, you mentioned that. But the road's getting dangerous. Let's do it, man. Let's start walking up those steps. Like I said, when we come back through here, we can um, go to those ruins. Staying safe, I hope. Yep. We can uh, look for that island. Um, I mean, even in the smallest of towns, there's work to be done. And plus, on our walk up here, maybe we'll see some more bears. Are you ready for this, Lydia? Come on, let's go. A little shrine here. Reed etched tablet. Emblem 1. Before the birth of men, the dragons ruled all Mundus. Their word was the voice, and they spoke only for true needs. For the voice could blot out the sky and flood the land. Okay. Alright, so it's an interpretive trail. Nice. Anybody counting the steps? Oh, what is... Uh, yeah. Frostbite spider. Thanks, Lydia. Uh, search the frostbite spider, grab its frostbite venom. A spider. Did not expect to see a spider up here. Uh, goat hide. And the horns are miscellaneous. Don't know what I'm supposed to do with miscellaneous stuff. Oh, Lydia's got her torch out. Nice. Good job, Lydia. Good job. There's the bustling town of Iverstead there. Now, Iverstead on the map is spelled... E-A-D. Okay. I could have swore that the, the, the road signs did not have an A in Iverstead, but... It was I-V-A-R-S-T-E-D, but I guess I'm wrong about that. Hello, goats. How are you? We'll just walk up here with the goats. Goats are keeping me company. Hi, goat. Why is my health bar showing up? Ooh, there's a dude here. What's up? Looks like he's praying or something. Hey man, what's up, Barkner? Keep an eye out for wolves if you're headed up the path to High Hrothgar. I am, actually. What's up? Yeah? Hey, um, come here, dude. I'm talking to you. Do you, um, do you visit the Greybeards? They're not the sort to take visitors. But I never go that high up the path anyway. Oh, okay. Some folk who make the trip leave them food or other essentials, but not to make conversation. All right. Well, what are you? Whoa. What are you doing? I like to spend time up here, walk the steps, meditate on the emblems. Doesn't hurt when I bag some game along the way. Fair enough. Did you hear the gray birds call Dovakin? Seems kind of random. Is that the word I heard them say? I did. Strange days when the monks will do that. I wonder what it means. Hmm. Okay. Nice meeting you, Barknar. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What's this one say? Emblem 2. Men were born and spread over the face of Mundus. The dragons presided over the crawling masses. Men were weak then and had no voice. Up we go. I actually kind of like that we're doing this at night. It makes it more magical. You know what I haven't done in a while? I haven't pressed F5 in a while. Ooh, ooh, what is that? Ooh, ooh, what is it? Look at that thing. It looks like it's stuck. It's an ice wraith. It does not like fire. An ice wraith? Neat. Oh, cool. Ice wraith. What do you think about that, Lydia? I'm gonna search the ice pile. I'm gonna grab ice wraith essence and ice wraith teeth. Neat. That was pretty cool. Yeah. I like it. Ooh. It's getting pretty treacherous looking here. Come on, Lydia, let's go. Oh, hey. Yo! That hurt. Oh, jeez, little help, Lydia. <laughs> Doggone it. Ah, shoot. I didn't save after killing that ice wraith. Now, it's as if I never even saw the ice wraith. I wonder if it'll still be here. It probably won't. And I will have lost the Ice Wraith. Oh, it is still here. Good. Yo! Cool. Ice Wraith. Yes. Ice Wraith. Okay. All right, Lydia. Hey, look at her stretching. I want to wait. I want my shout to come back before I turn this corner and see this saber cat or whatever it is. Yeah. Uh, that was pre pre premature, maybe. Shoot it, dude. Damn it. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. Apparently I don't have anything mapped here. For health. Uh, potion of healing, 50 points of health. Okay, we'll do that. Ouch, Lydia. Can use some help here. Okay, there we go. Search the snowy saber cat and grab its eye and pelt. That was scary. Those things, man. They, uh, they don't mess around. Freaking saber cat. Snowy saber cat. At that. Well, another one of these tablets here. Oh, thistle branch here. Excuse me. No, oh, sorry. Etched Tablet Emblem 3, the fledgling spirits of men were strong in old times, unafraid to war with dragons and their voices. But the dragons only shouted them down and broke their hearts. It's getting kind of hard to see up here. Right, Lydia? It's pretty cool. What's the map look like? <laughs> Looks like we still have a ways to go, huh? Really nice weather effects here. Gotta be careful. We don't want to fall down off this mountain. That would be bad.
So we got my health all the way back yet. Slowly, slowly regenerating. Another one of these shrine thingies. Oh, somebody here. Boy, he looks like he's barely wearing any clothes at all. Look at this guy. Oh, Keep an eye out for wolves if you're headed up the path to High Rothgar. Carita, I would like to speak with you. Need something? What are you doing? Walking the steps, meditating on the emblems. I make this trip every few years. Hmm. Who are you? Just a pilgrim. I'd prefer to leave it at that, if you don't mind. Okay, that's fair. Um, did you hear the Greybirds... Greybirds? <laughs> Greybeards call Dovakin? I was just outside Iverstead when it happened. It's an exciting moment. Nothing like this has happened in centuries. I guess we're referring to the sound they made when they called me, I guess. Until next time. Emblem 4. Kine called on Parthernax, who pitied man. Together they taught men to use the voice. Then Dragon War raged. Dragon against Tongue. I'd watch that movie. What's up, Mr. Goat? This is pretty awesome. Lydia is quite the trooper. She's hanging in there with us. Doesn't complain one bit. Oh, troll or something. Is it a troll? Can you can you get him from here, Lydia? Here he comes, Frost Troll. Yeah, they do not like fire. Get it all. Yeah. Good job, Lydia. Nicely done. Thanks for your help. We got another shrine here. It's getting harder and harder to see. Emblem 5. Man prevailed, shouting Alduin out of the world proving for all that their voice, too, was strong, although their sacrifices were many-fold. Still got a ways to go. Looks like I got a level up available that I didn't notice before. Let's keep pumping it into Magicka. Uh, I don't believe there's anything new we can do in destruction. Well, maybe here there is. Oh, that's right. I could put it into frost, but I don't want to do that. down. Another shrine here. Oh, there are a couple things on my compass still, even though we're way up here. Emblem 6. With roaring tongues, the sky children conquer, founding the first empire with sword and voice whilst the dragons withdrew from this world. Well, this looks like a nice place to stop and read a book. So that's what Lydia and I are going to do right now. Today, we're going to read the third volume of The Wolf Queen. It begins now. The Wolf Queen Book 3 by Wogan Jarth. 
from the pen of the first century third era sage Montecai. Third era 98. The Emperor Pelagius Septim II died a few weeks before the end of the year on the 15th of Evening Star during the festival of the North Wind's Prayer, which was considered a bad omen for the Empire. He had ruled over a difficult 17 years. In order to fill the bankrupt treasury, Pelagius had dismissed the Elder Council, forcing them to buy back their positions. Several good but poor counselors had been lost. Many say the Emperor had died as a result of being poisoned by a vengeful former council member. His children came to attend his funeral and the coronation of the next Emperor. His youngest son, Prince Magnus, 19 years of age, arrived from Alme Almalexia, where he had been a counselor to the royal court. 21-year-old Prince Sepphoris arrived from Ghislaine with his Red Guard bride, Queen Bianc Bianchi. Prince Antiochus, at 43 years of age, the eldest child and heir presumptive, had been his father, or had been with his father in the imperial city. The last to appear was his only daughter, Potema, the so-called Wolf Queen of Solitude. Thirty years old and radiantly beautiful, she arrived with a magnificent entourage accompanied by her husband, the elderly King Montiarco, and her year-old son, Uriel. All expected Antiochus to assume the throne of the Empire, but no one knew what to expect from the Wolf Queen. Third Era 99 Lord Vakin has been bringing several men to your sister's chambers late at night, every night this week, offered the spymaster, perhaps if her husband were made aware. My sister is a devotee of the conqueror gods, Remen and Talos, not the love goddess Stabella. She is plotting with those men, not having orgies with them. I'd wager I've slept with more men than she has, laughed Antiochus, and then grew serious. She's behind the delay of the council offering me the crown, I know it. Six weeks now. They say they need to update records and prepare for the coronation. I'm the emperor, crown me, and to oblivion with the formalities. Your sister is surely no friend of yours, your majesty, but there are other factors at play. Do not forget how your father treated the council. It is they who need following, and if need be, strong convincing, the spymaster added with a suggestive stab of his dagger. Do so, but keep your eye on the damnable Wolf Queen as well. You know where to find me. At which brothel, your highness, inquired the spymaster. Today being Freitas, I'll be at the Cat and Goblin. The spymaster noted in his report that night that Queen Potema had no visitors, for she was dining across the Imperial Garden at the Blue Palace with her mother, the Dowager Empress Quintilla. It was a warm night for wintertide, and surprisingly cloudless, though the day had been stormy. The saturated ground could not make, could not take any more, so the formal, structured gardens looked as if they had been glazed with water. The two women took their wine to the wide balcony to look over the grounds. I believe you were trying to sabotage your half-brother's coronation, said Quintilla, not looking at her daughter. Potema saw how the years had not so much wrinkled her mother as faded her, like a sun or like the sun on a stone. It's not true, said Potema, but would it bother you very much if it were true? Antiochus is not my son. He was eleven years old when I married your father, and we've never been close. I think that being heir presumptive has stunted his growth. He is old enough to have a family with grown children, and yet he spends all his time at debauchery and fornication. He will not make a very good emperor, Quintilla sighed and then turned to Potema. But it is bad for the family for seeds of discontent to be sown. It is easy to, vi easy to divide up into factions, but very difficult to unite again. I fear for the future of the empire. Those sound like the words, Are you by any chance dying, mother? I've read the omens, said Quintilla with a faint, ironic smile. Don't forget... I was a renowned sorceress in Camlorn. I will be dead in a few months' time, and then, not a year later, your husband will die. I only regret that I will not live to see your child Uriel assume the throne of solitude. Have you seen whether... Potema stopped, not wanting to reveal too many of her plans, even to a dying woman. Whether he will be emperor? Aye, I know the answer to that too, daughter. Don't fear, 
you'll live to see the answer one way or the other. I have a gift for him when he is of age. The Dowager Empress removed a necklace with a single great yellow gem from around her neck. It's a soul gem, infused with the spirit of a great werewolf your father and I defeated in battle 36 years ago. I've enchanted it with spells from the School of Illusion so its wearer may charm whoever he chooses. An important skill for a king. And an emperor, said Potema, taking the necklace. Thank you, mother. An hour later, passing the black branches of the sculpted duad shrubs, Potema noticed a dark figure, which vanished into the shadows under the eaves at her approach. She had noticed people following her before. It was one of the hazards of life in the imperial court. But this man was too close to her chambers. She slipped the necklace around her neck. Come out where I can see you, she commanded. The man emerged from the shadows, a dark little fellow of middle age, dressed in black-dyed goatskin. His eyes were fixed, frozen, under her spell. Who do you work for? Prince Antiochus is my master, he said in a dead voice. I am his spy. A plan formed. Is the prince in his study? No, milady. And you have access? Yes, milady. Potema smiled widely. She had him. Lead the way. The next morning, the storm reappeared in all its fury. The pelting on the walls and ceiling was agony to Antiochus, who was discovering that he no longer had his youthful immunity to a late night of hard drinking. He shoved hard against the Argonian wench, sharing his bed. Make yourself useful and close the window, he moaned. No sooner had the window been bolted than there was a knock at the door. It was the spy master. He smiled at the prince and handed him a sheet of paper. What is this? said Antiochus, squinting his eyes. I must still be drunk. It looks like orcish. I think you will find it useful, your majesty. Your sister is here to see you. Antiochus considered getting dressed or sending his bedmate out, but thought better of it. Show her in. Let her be scandalized. If Potema was scandalized, she did not show it. Swathed in orange and silver silk, she entered the room with a triumphant smile, followed by the man mountain Lord Vaken. Dear brother, I spoke to my mother last night, and she advised me very wisely. She said I should not battle with you in public for the good of our family and the empire. Therefore, she said, producing from the folds of her robe a piece of paper, I am offering you a choice. A choice, said Antiochus, returning her smile. That does sound friendly. Abdicate your rights to the imperial throne voluntarily, and there is no need for me to show the council this, Potema said, handing her brother the letter. It is a letter with your seal on it, saying that you knew that your father was not Pelagius Septim II, but the royal steward Fondukth. Now, before you deny writing the letter, you cannot deny the rumors, nor that the imperial council will believe that your father, the old fool, was quite capable of being cuckolded. Whether it's true or not, or whether the letter is a forgery or not, the scandal of it would ruin your chances of being the emperor. Antiochus' face had gone white with fury. Don't fear, brother, said Potema, taking back the letter from his shaking hands. I will see to it that you have a very comfortable life and all the horrors your heart or any other organ desires. Suddenly, Antiochus laughed. He looked over at his spy master and winked. I remember when you broke into my stash of Kajiti erotica and blackmailed me. That was close to 20 years ago. We've got better locks now, you must have noticed. It must have killed you that you couldn't use your own skills to get what you wanted. Potema merely smiled. It didn't matter. She had him. You must have charmed my servant here into getting you into my study to use my seal, Antiochus smirked. A spell, perhaps, from your mother, the witch? Potema continued to smile. Her brother was cleverer than she thought. Did you know that charm spells, even powerful ones, only last so long? Of course you didn't. You never were one for magic. Let me tell you, a generous salary is a stronger motivation for keeping a servant in the long run, sister. Antiochus took out his own sheet of paper. Now I have a choice for you. What is that? said Potema, her smile faltering. It looks like nonsense, but if you know what you're looking for, it's very clear. It's a practice sheet. Your handwriting attempting to look like, like my handwriting. It's a good gift you have. I wonder if you haven't done this before, 
imitating another person's handwriting. I understand a letter was found from your husband's dead wife saying that her first son was a bastard. I wonder if you wrote that letter. I wonder if I showed this evidence of your gift to your husband, whether he would believe you wrote that leather letter. In the future, dear, dear Wolf Queen, don't lay the same trap twice. Potema shook her head, furious, unable to speak. Give me your forgery and go take a walk in the rain. And then, later today, unhatch whatever other plots you have to keep me from the throne. Antiochus fixed his eyes on Potemus. I will be emperor, Wolf Queen. Now go. Potema handed her brother the letter and left the room. For a few moments, out in the hallway, she said nothing. She merely glared at the silvers, or slivers of rainwater dripping down the marble wall from a tiny unseen crack. Yes, you will, brother, she said, but not for very long. Nice. I suspect there are other volumes in the Wolf Queen story, but those are the only three that I have so far. I haven't found any of the other ones yet. Hopefully, if they do exist, we will find them sooner rather than later. That'll do it for this episode. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, won't you let me know? Maybe leave me a like or a comment. Thanks for watching. I sure hope you join me again in the next episode.